Hi everyone, I'm Ali, I'm an architect, and today we're going to talk about becoming an architect in the UK. So let's go. Okay, I've titled this video Route 1 because this is the most common way to become an architect in the UK, and that's by going to university for a bachelor's degree and then a master's degree. Um, and between those, you would do some professional practice and um, record that, and then you take your part three exam. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Um, future videos may look at different routes, like maybe working part time, particularly in your master's degree, or also apprenticeship schemes, which have become more popular and is also another a great option. In the UK, architect is a protected title and you can't legally use it unless you are uh, registered with the ARB, which is the Architects Registration Board. And in order to be registered with the ARB, you need to have completed the part one, part two and part three or the equivalent of those. OK, so route one as well takes seven years minimum um, to complete. This is the system that I did. Um, it took me 11 years. That's because of difficulties in getting um, appropriate professional practice. It really is the main thing to be able to then take my part three exam. So trying to get enough PDR to be able to take my part three exam. Becoming an architect in the UK is made up of the part one, which is your bachelor's degree, then a year out in professional practice, your part two, which is your master's degree, and then a year out in professional practice, and then your part three, which as a standard is a year long sort of exam process and uh, coursework. But you can also do courses that are more accelerated than that. Uh, then the two sort of yellow blocks you can see that are the professional practice, they are time in real offices um, as a proper employee and you record your experience there using PEDR, which we have other videos on and I'll link them in the description below. What you're looking for in a university is that the degree they're providing you provides an exemption from the RBA ARB part one or part two criteria. Um, you can find that through like RIBA validated schools as well. So essentially what you want from your bachelor's degree is that it will give you the equivalent of a part one when you've graduated. So that just means that the course has been kind of checked and inspected and that it's achieving the right sort of competency for you upon graduation to be classed as a part one, which means then in practice, you'd be a part one architectural assistant. Uh, then there's the same system for your master's degree. Um, you're looking for a master's degree that provides you an exemption from having to prove you've undertaken anything in part two because the degree itself does that. And then when you leave that degree, you'd be part two accredited. So you'd be a part two architectural assistant. And then once you've achieved 24 months and logged it in PEDR, you can um, sit your part three exam. So your part three exam, like the actual study for it and everything can start before you've got the full 24 months and you can finish your 24 months as long as it's just before your exam period. But we can get into that in um, particular videos on part three and what that means. In the graphic, you can see the time before you start your degree, which is where you're doing GCSEs and A-levels or like hires if you're from Scotland, um, that kind of level of skills. And I've talked about what you need in terms of those in different videos, but basically, depending on what university you want to apply to for your bachelor's degree, you should check their entry requirements. And there are a few that don't ask for any specific courses or specific grades. They ask for a kind of broad range and obviously the best grades you can get. So choose subjects that work for you to get into that bachelor's degree. Um, and then after your part three, you're qualified. You would then be an architect and you would register with the ARB. Once you register with the ARB, that's when you can start using the title architect. Um, but there is ongoing requirements like CPD, which is continuing professional development. Uh, you need to continue your learning and kind of stay up to date with things. And also you might choose to pursue additional qualifications or to specialize in certain areas of architecture as well. So in summary, this is becoming an architect in the UK, route one, using universities. So here you can see the part one and part two are university courses. The part one is your bachelor's and the part two is your master's. And those are the two things that you want to take at university. Uh, then the rest is actual just experience in practice. So you're in work, you're employed, you're paid. You record that experience through PDR sheets every three months. And there's a different video on that. And then once you have 24 months, you can undertake the part three exam. And the part three exam is run by various different universities. Um, you can basically take it anywhere that you want to that offers the course. Uh, we can talk more about that in a specific part three video. Um, and you'll basically just want to pick a course that works for you. Um, when you pass that course, then you become accredited as an architect or you can register with the ARB to use the title architect. So that's the most efficient system for becoming an architect in the UK. Um, 
the quickest, the easiest, and hopefully kind of makes sense. If you have any more questions about like what part one, part two, part three is, then do ask below. Um, I know when I was working at like degree shows or open days at university, sometimes particularly parents are kind of confused about this. So as long as you choose a university course that's accredited with the RBA and ARB part one system, then by doing a bachelor's degree, you have part one automatically. And by doing a master's degree, you have part two automatically. So really part three is the only additional thing. And you're making that decision later in your career once you have um, actual experience um, in an office. So that's the general overview of how you become an architect in the UK. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Have a great day wherever you are. And I will talk to you again soon. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Sorry, the kids are leaving school, so... It's a little bit rambunctious outside. <laughs>